بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم and welcome to high school physics explained and today i want to help you understand cat scans and no we're not dealing with this type of cat scan no we are interested in cat scans that are performed in hospitals and are often referred to as ct scans but what does cat scan actually mean and what does it stand for the c stands for computed the machine takes a series of data points around your body and that information is compiled in a computer to form an image. The A stands for axial. Your body is placed onto this bed and moves into this large opening. The x-ray devices that spin around your body are collecting data around your axis and so it's referred to as axial. And thirdly, tomography. And tomography comes from the Greek words tomo, which means slice, and graphao, which means to write. So in essence, what we're doing is we're making images of slices of your body. So putting that all together, we obtain slices of your body by spinning around an x-ray device around your axis, and that data is collected and with the use of a computer is compiled to form an image. Let's look closer at the CAT scan device. So here we have an image of a CAT scan machine and it is made of a number of components. And first, of course, is we have the bed. You slide into the CAT scan machine as it takes a series of images around your axis. We have x-rays and that's really important. Ultimately, a CAT scan is a glorified x-ray machine with some major differences, which I will discuss shortly. But what we have is an X-ray source up here that spins around your body. And on the other side of the X-ray source, we have a series of detectors, which picks up the X-rays as they pass through your body. And finally, we have the whole device, which is called the gantry. Now we're particularly interested in the gantry and how the x-rays pass through your body. So we're going to examine that next. So here we have our x-ray source. Down the bottom, we have a series of sensors that pick up the x-rays down here. And of course we have our x-rays. And this whole thing is able to turn 360 degrees. If you were to place your body in the center of that, it spins around your axis and again, that's where the word axial is involved. But let us place an object inside the gantry to see how this is used to compile an image. And the object we're going to use is something very basic. It's just going to represent a box that is made up of three different densities. And so we have here a section that is going to be very dense, that's the black. We have something that is a little less dense, that's the gray here, and this light gray represents something that is really light in density. But we're only looking at a slice, so this is therefore representing a rectangle. What are we going to see as X-ray passes through this particular object and hits the sensors over here? Well, the thing you're going to see at zero degrees, if this is zero, is an image where we only have one little white block. Why is that? Well, all the x-rays are blocked by the greatest density over here, and we're not going to get any information from this section. So we're just going to get a white section like so. Now let's spin this now to 90 degrees. What are we going to get that now? Now clearly, we're going to have x-rays going to be impeded by the three different materials, and we're going to get something to this effect. So it's clearly much wider. It's picking up the full length of my section. We're going to have the white to represent the greatest density. We're going to have light gray to represent something that is reasonably high in density. And it's going to be a darker gray for the area that represents a low density. Just looking at those two images, it tells you straight away, my object is more than likely longer than it is in width because of the fact that this is shorter and this is longer. So now let's have a look at 45 degrees. Now it's not meant to be absolutely accurate, but let's examine what's going on. 
So if we look at down right down the center, we have a ray of x-rays that is passing only through the middle material, which is here. But as we recede out, we can see that this particular light ray is going predominantly through the darker material. Well, that's going to represent this section here. But as we go away, we have less material to pass through. And so you're going to get a drop off in intensity. It's going to get therefore darker. Similarly speaking over here. Again, at this section, you're going to get a white section where you're going to get a lot of, of x-rays being absorbed. But as you move closer to the middle section, you're going to see there's going to be less absorption going on. And so it's going to get a little, little darker. Now, like I said, it's not meant to be totally accurate. So please don't put a comment to say that my diagrams aren't totally accurate. But what I'm trying to show you is the fact that you're going to get differences in densities as x-rays get absorbed at different amounts at 45 degrees. And clearly that is different to 90 degrees and at zero degrees. Now those are just three images. The CAT scan is going to take a whole series of scans at many points around the gantry. Now all that data has to be collated and using some very complex mathematical calculations, that's where the computer comes in. It eventually allows the computer to determine what the image is which is going to be a negative of the object in this case. So the object is rectangular and really dark, and it's going to be white to represent the greatest density. Similarly here, a section that is actually low in density is going to appear dark, and something that's in between is going to appear light as well. But of course, what we place in there is not a little rectangular block. We put in the person and it's going to take various slices. So let's have a look what a CAT scan is going to look like. So here is a sheet to represent the various slices as it's passed through a human body. So here you can see the actual image of the head. These lines represent what each of these slices represent. So the very top scan as it produces one slice is going to produce simply the top and the white of course represents the bone. The tissue in between is your brain. As we go down to the various slices, you can see we're going to get larger slices simply because the cross section is larger. Now, I would argue that probably the radiographer here wanted to know a lot more detail about the bone structure and the uh, tissue uh, in this section of the head. So the slices are done at smaller increments. And all these slices here at closer increments represent these images here. If you look, you can see the eyeballs clearly. You can see brain clearly. And the white stuff represents, of course, the greatest density of bone. So here is another slice. In this case, it's a slice of the abdomen. And the white sections represent bone. So this is bone over here. But notice something else that you don't really see in normal x-rays. You start to see a lot more detail of soft tissues. We have our large intestine. This object here is the kidney. The white over here represents the skin. And if you look closely, you can see evidence of the ribs and other organs as well. It clearly shows you that the higher density materials appear white and lower density materials appear darker. But there's definitely the ability here to see soft tissue as well as bone. Now the beauty of CAT scans or CT scans is the fact that all the data is processed by a computer. So although we can get slices, we can also get slices that are not what you would expect from a CAT scan. So here is the same CAT scan, but in this case, we have a slice that is going down the body. This is referred to as a sagittal section, where here we have an axial or a cross section that is along the axis. We can also produce what we call a coronal section. And so here the slice is down the body. Now this does not mean that the patient has to enter the CAT scan in a different way. Although the x-rays are collected around the axis of your body, we can produce images in a number of different planes. 
That, of course, can lead the fact that we can then also produce three dimensional images as well. In this case, the CAT scan was used to scan a Peruvian mummy. And now the data has been collated to produce a three dimensional image and colorized to show the muscle tissue. So there is a huge advantage of CAT scan technology. It allows us to accurately determine structure, both of hard tissue and soft tissue. So let's summarize what we know about conventional x-rays and CAT scans and make a couple of comments. First, I want to discuss the similarities. Number one, they both use x-rays, where you both are using a form of electromagnetic radiation. Secondly, they both produce high resolution images. Why is that important? Well, they both allow us to give us good structural information. But there are key differences. And the first difference is that we have only hard tissue that we can use for x-rays. And if you had an x-ray before, you're not going to see much information about soft tissue. CAT scans are able to produce images to help us differentiate both hard and soft tissue. So there is much greater detail in the CAT scan. The next difference is that a conventional x-ray is only two-dimensional, whereas a CAT scan allows to form an image that is three-dimensional. Now, this is a chief reason why CAT scans are often employed by doctors. If you had, let's say, a fracture of a facial bone, and I have actually had that, the normal x-ray may be able to show that I have a fracture in my face. However, it doesn't allow the doctor to determine accurately the position and the extent of that fracture. So therefore, a CAT scan is taken to allow the doctor to clearly identify the exact location of that fracture. Is it towards the front of my skull or is it further back? An equivalent x-ray is unable to show this. A CAT scan is. Now, there are some differences, though, that put the CAT scan at a disadvantage. Firstly, the amount of x-rays that you're exposed to in a normal x-ray is a low dosage. Whereas you're constantly being exposed to x-rays from multiple angles in a CAT scan, so you're going to have a high dosage. Now, x-rays are a form of electromagnetic radiation that are ionizing. That is, they can have the potential to damage cells. And of course, over long-term exposures, that can lead to things such as abnormalities and particular cancers. A doctor may not request a CAT scan unless it provides them information to make a better diagnosis. If a conventional X-ray does the job, there's no need for a CAT scan. The next difference is that there is no computer required for a conventional X-ray, where of course a CT scan that is essential. And lastly, a conventional X-ray is relatively cheap to produce. Since there's no computer and you just require the film, then basically the X-rays are relatively cheap to get. Whereas a CT scan, because of all the technology required, is significantly more expensive. So again, a doctor may look at an X-ray and because of the fact that it has a low dosage and is cheap, if it does the job, that is all that is required. However, if the information collected from an X-ray does not give enough information to make a more accurate diagnosis of the issue involved with the patient, then although there is a high dosage of X-rays, and although it's also more expensive, it may lead to a better diagnosis and therefore better treatment options if the CAT scan is produced. So it's a, it's a weighing of the pros and cons. Well, I hope that has helped you understand CAT scans a little bit better. Please subscribe to the channel and share this video. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.